From NPR and WTFF, this is Clear the Air. I'm Jerry Groves. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a staple of holiday specials, children's literature, and seasonal songs, but few people know the fascinating history of Rudolph's entry into popular culture. With me today to delve into this subject is the reindeer himself. Rudolph, thank you for joining us. First of all, I want it clear that you are not calling me reindeer. It is insult. You will not define me as tied to sled and made to pull it. I I'm so sorry. I and you think you are enlightened liberal, but are you caring about animal rights? Yet. I assure you, I didn't mean it. And you will not call me red-nosed. It's okay to tell story how I was bullied. It's not necessary for you to do it. But really, I didn't intend to... Uh, not to worry. I understand. It's hard for you to see how you are prejudiced. Prejudiced? Da. You are human supremacist. But you are blind. Then please help me to see how I'm insensitive. How, for example, should I refer to your species? In Russia, where I was born, we are called uh, Alinia. Alinia? Yet. Alinia. I'm sorry, I, I don't think that... Look, I know how public broadcasting system likes to say names of places and peoples just like natives. But I don't have time to teach you. Besides, it is very self-righteous how you do this thing. Plus, you look like idiots, trying too hard. Just say, I am caribou. Oh, okay. Rudolph, the uh, caribou. And, and just for your information, Rudolph is not my real name. It was given to me by oppressor. Oh, shit. I, I mean, how are you called in your native tongue? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't sweat it. You can call me Rudolph. Thanks. And how would you like to be characterized? What? You know, in instead of red-nosed. Well, look at most of me. What you see? Well, it's kind of tan with a little pinkish cast. Would you even say it glows? Well, no. Exactly. So, uh, how did it come about? It, it, uh, it was the way Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen and Comet and Cupid, but especially Dasher, would always suck up to old Nick. Oh, Santa, this red suit, it looks so good on you. Oh, Santa, you work so hard bringing toys to children. Like it was him who was pulling sled. <laughs> One day I had enough. You are all such brown nosers, I said. Well, they didn't want to hear it. So they started in on me. Red noser. <laughs> so clever. Hey, stop light snout. A little better. At least it had alliteration. What's up, beat beak? Probably the best one. Short, snappy, and almost a rhyme. But Vixen. Vixen, she was the most cruel. Oh, Rudolph, you know what I like most about you? It is not your antlers. It is not your eyes, and it is definitely not your hideous nose. In fact, I don't like you at all. Oh, it must have been traumatic for you to be singled out for such abuse. <laughs> singled out? <laughs> I was not the only one. They would tear into Dunder and Blixen just as much as me. You mean Donner and Blitzen? Well, it depends on which version of famous poem you have. There are many different ones. But 
Dunder was not brightest bulb on tree. Old Nick called him Dunderhead, or just Dunder. And Blixen was a little slow mentally, so she got say, uh, the, the name, name which was uh, Dutch for lightning. Old Nick was always sarcastic, S.O.B. Uh, but St. Nicholas, or Santa Claus, is always portrayed as jolly. What you mean, always? Historical St. Nicholas smashed Bishop Arius in mouth at ecumenical council. Uh, but is beside point. This man has no connection to old Nick. For a long time, story of winter visitor coming down chimney tells of bringing sticks to beat children that were naughty, or even kidnapping them to work as slaves. Really? Well, what you think old Nick had in sack, slung over back? Toys? Ha! Old Nick was boogeyman. Oh, come on, surely you're making that up. But the song say, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Keep going. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be Good for goodness sake. But I was always told that just meant he wouldn't bring you presents. <laughs> no gifts is least of worries for bad children. Think human trafficking, even cannibalism. Well, maybe a long time ago. Ah, don't be fool. Tiger is not changing stripes, even if he's putting on red suit. So you're saying that... Just, just think about it. Santa is anagram for Satan. What? Da. And old Nick is named for devil. Look it up. Sound of hooves on rooftop. Only recently did children think it was caribou. Uh, so, where did the story of a man bringing gifts come from? Well, you have wise men in Bible bringing gifts to baby Jesus. Then some people would tell children that baby Jesus would bring them gifts if they were good. Uh, Chris Kringle comes from German for Christ child, and Feast of St. Nicholas it was, was in winter, so some would say it was him. But along with Saint would come Black Peter, who was demon controlled by Nicholas for doing horrible things. And the story of the jolly man with the white beard? Did the writer of Twas the Night Before Christmas make him up? Oh, neat, neat. As people in West, especially America, became affluent, old Nick could see writing on wall. He needed no image. Instead of terrorizing children, intelligent move was to appeal to greed and promote self-interest. I was not around back then, but Dunder told me story about uh, old Nick's decision to visit home of Clement Moore as jolly little man with lots of toys. And Clement Moore wrote it all down in poem just as it happened. Mostly. Mostly? You mean parts of it were real and parts made up? Da. So uh, what parts were made up? And the whole beat about entering and leaving through chimney is nonsense. Was from legend about boogeyman sneaking into house that way. So why do you say it's nonsense? Think about poem. What is on ground outside? Snow. And what did people in early 19th century do to keep from freezing when snow was on ground at night? Well, I guess they built a fire. Correct. Which is why they are hanging stockings by chimney to get them dry. Because they were bad after walking in snow. So, with fire going up chimney, 
is nobody coming down. <laughs> and so how did he get in? Well, normally Old Nick bought Jimmy a window open, but Clement Moore had opened one already to see what was going on outside. And he came in the same window that Moore was looking out of? Da. Shoved that slack-jawed idiot aside and hopped right in. But that's not how Clement Moore tells the story. Probably hurt his pride being pushed around by little old man. I could see that. Tell me, Rudolph, what's it like living at the North Pole with Santa and his elves? <laughs> Is nobody leaving at North Pole? It's only ice on top of sea water. Well, where does Santa live? Most recently, Saskatchewan, in northmost part. He moves around? Da. Nah. Why is that? Income tax. No government believes he operates international toy business and only gets paid in milk and cookies. Okay. Then what's it like living in Saskatchewan with Santa and his elves? Seriously? You believe in elves? Well, why not? It's ridiculous. I don't see what's so ridiculous. I'm interviewing a friggin' talking caribou. <sighs> and what is point you make? Never mind. So, if it's not elves, who makes all the toys? Well, back when I was guiding Slay, it was oppressed Mexicans. Now it's mostly oppressed Chinese. Rudolph, I really want to hear your story about being chosen to guide Santa's sleigh. It obviously wasn't because your nose glowed in the dark. Uh, but first, I'd like to go back to a previous question. If it's offensive for people to call you red-nosed or reindeer, what would you like to be called? Just plain Rudolph the caribou? Or is there something more? Da. Rudolph the anarchist caribou. You're an anarchist? Da. Why? When you have seen what I have seen, Oppression in sweatshops, making toys, subjugation of caribou to deliver toys, religion and government and big business working hand in hand to promote Christmas as obscene orgy of greed and guilt-driven consumerism, the only logical choice is to become anarchist. Well, thank you, Rudolph, for that insight. This is Clear the Air, and I'm Jerry Groves. We'll be back with the story of Rudolph's rise from obscurity to become the iconic figure he is today, right after a brief message from your NPR station. <laughs> 